Namaste everyone. Good evening and welcome to today's, uh, uh, that's the second session of our life transformation program continued. So this is a common uh, program um, that I'm doing for uh, those of you who have attended the one day life transformation program in Mumbai, Pune, Goa, and also at my the full retreat in Goa. And also those of you who are in my groups, uh, the, uh, the one day life transformation group, and you're watching the three recorded videos, the full day video on Telegram maybe, or in the Facebook group. So I hope you have, uh, it's been, yeah, quite, uh, it's been over 15 days now. So I hope uh, you watch the video completely. And uh, today I will be continuing with uh, just a summary of the last session. Uh, certain things we discussed, which I shared in the recording and it's also in the document. Uh, every day from 5th of December to 19th of December, I'm hosting the New Earth Summit. So every day there's going to be a webinar uh, in the morning, 11 to 1, and then in the evening, 6 to 8. Uh, and yeah, we are covering 30 topics, 10 on wellness of mind, body, spirit, 10 on food and farming, 10 on environment. And this is the sixth year of the New Earth Summit, India's first integrative summit on solutions to our problems in health, food, farming, environment. So please see my posts on that in my groups. Or on my channel and um, uh, if yeah do attend uh, the the webinars i will be sharing the zoom link uh, soon in a couple of days and before that uh, have a look at the topics and if you know any experts uh, who can be panelists on the topics uh, do let me know so this year all the topics are uh, panel discussions we are not having individual sessions because as you all know there are several a big problems in the world in all these areas so uh yeah so we are trying to deal with all of those uh that's why we are getting expert you know panel uh people to who have a lot of experience on those topics so the topics are already finalized and uh yeah that you'll get to see so please help with uh you know getting some uh, uh experienced panelists uh, on the program. So, uh, coming back to what we were discussing last time. And, uh, uh, yeah, in uh, some of our discussions, finally, I was sharing that uh, uh, something relevant to today's first question in the uh, invite that I sent to all of you. And that is... Uh, are we being deceived yeah, uh, with our connection with God? So very specifically, let me just, uh, uh, the same words that I used uh, was, have we been deceived to disengage from God? So uh, first thing, uh, yeah, coming to the, uh, what is God, right? If you have to disengage from something, so if you've seen uh, uh, the videos and gone through the experiences of the life transformation program, you would have seen that uh, first it, it makes uh, the most sense uh, instead of talking of something very abstract uh, that's invisible out there, we start with the body, we start with our food and those questions that were asked of everybody and the replies, you've got to understand that, uh, yeah, we are... Uh, uh, completely all our five senses, which is the experience that we are going through. You know, we have not created our DNA, neither our parents have created it. So there is a universal energy force that has, you know, made this DNA and this kind of human body. There's also that same force that is what we call our soul and spirit within us. And we just uh, happen to be some consciousness is experiencing all this, these things that are already created. So, so that is the uh, 
the God that we are talking about that is within us. And then our life comes from the plants. And so that same energy is within the plants. And the plants get the energy from the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, space. And so then that same energy is there. And people in the retreat got to see a little more of uh, certain diagrams and all what I showed and explained of the different dimensions of uh, third dimension, fifth dimension. And of course, above that also seven, eight till about 16. Where um, at the lower dimensions, beyond physical body, as we go higher and higher, it's more and more energy bodies. So... Uh, yeah, through all of this, so we were talking about uh, that God from which uh, everything has come out and uh, everything is, and there is nothing else you will ever find in the entire cosmos. So how it's sometimes it becomes very difficult to understand the people who are searching for God in so many places and making, you know, so many efforts. And uh, when that what they're seeking for is the seeker itself, you know, these eyes, the consciousness that is within us, that is seeking, it's literally God looking for God. So that, I mean, I hope everybody someday comes to that level of awareness and has a good laugh. And um, I had also shared that, you know, uh, the indigenous communities of the world who were there before all this modernization or industrialization started, all of them had the same understanding of what they call great spirit or God that is in everything from which everything has come in and everything goes back into so how can you be disconnected from this once you understand all of this? So last time I talked of two, uh, uh, you know, teachings that are so popular and even now in the world, uh, so many gurus and uh, still propagating it. And we talked of the three paths of, you know, uh, Dhyana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Karma Yoga. And analyzing... Uh, at a deep level, but very simply also, when a baby is born, last time I was talking about, yeah, the baby, it looks at certain things, that is the jnana yoga part of it. And then, like for example, walking, right? Uh, baby is on the floor for the first few days, weeks and all of that, and uh, maybe a month or two also. And then uh, baby so inquisitive and seeing all parents and others moving around two legs. And so it starts understanding something. And that's a learning phase. Then after that, mother, father help the baby and uh, the baby starts walking. That is karma yoga. Uh, and uh, then after that, once the baby starts walking, it has the belief and the assurance once it walks well, that these legs will take it through life, walking all the way. And so that's a form of bhakti yoga, trust in, yeah, the process or in what's going on. So this, every little thing that you will see in life, in fact, every day we go through these uh, uh, phases. When you don't understand something and you make some efforts to understand, you can call that as also karma. I'm making efforts to uh, understand this particular thing. I'm doing the practices. I'm trying to get the experience. And then after this, karma, doing certain karma, like for example, you know, uh, making a document or something, then you finally, uh, something comes out of it. And from what manifests and is created, then you get some gyan of it. Okay, this is how this thing works. And then you trust that. And on that trust, so this is our entire learning process, right? We uh, trust that we can put a word together after we learn A, B, C, D. So it is there in literally everything, every day. It just goes on as a cyclic process. 
But here, what we understand is that so many teachers across the world, and if you analyze it very deeply, uh, across many systems, which is called divide and rule. Indian thing, Indians think that divide and rule is only when the British came and did something over here. But it's happening here also, where uh, uh, people are made to believe that, no, no, all three paths are too difficult for you. You don't think a lot. Okay. Uh, if you think a lot, then you just, you follow Jnana Yoga, the path of learning and all of that. And um, Karma Yoga is not for you. So people who do not understand much, then they will just be told what to do. And then the people who don't even understand what uh, is to be done, how it is to be done properly, they are told you do Bhakti Yoga. That means you just trust. Whatever happens, you trust. And uh, so many people uh, in the world are going through uh, one of these, the most deceptive uh, mechanism, which is trust. And uh, our governments are doing that. Trust the vaccines, trust this, trust that, trust the science. And this trust thing by people who claim they know things has created widespread uh, sickness and environmental destruction, a loss of control of people's uh, resources, and finally the governments and others being masters, uh, finally having this control who give us all these rules and regulations. And we have become all slaves. With the result now, all of those people who have been trusting for too long, they are told to expect the end times. And it's been going on many times, 2000, Y2K, then 2012, Mayan calendar, is the world is going to end. And then uh, the red planet Herkola burst in 2018 going to crash the earth. And now is it something else? Uh, pole shift is going to happen, great flood is going to happen. So people are being told to trust that these are the end times. Uh, we've been writing about it. It's in the holy books for 500, 600 years. Uh, yeah. And those people who trusted the vaccines and took it, you know, some were lucky, some were not. So some have passed away. Some are living with severe injuries. This is one example. And then, of course, uh, trust eating biofortified foods. Now, this is what governments are telling us, which have got synthetic molecules in them. So I'll yeah go a little bit ahead of this. Uh, so this is that one uh, deception. And uh, when we can, so whatever I was teaching in the retreat and in the uh, program also, when you can understand and you have this, uh, you know, the questioning process and you understand that uh, uh, you can and that interact directly with God every minute, every second, and you can have this process of uh, karma, bhakti, and jnana happening all the time. So then why do you have to bother with all of these separated philosophies? So it's an invite to your own uh, wisdom and uh, experience and be authentic with what you're experiencing. Uh, one reason is that uh, I say that uh, all the religious and spiritual books of the last uh, 5,000 years have lesser spiritual wisdom than what each of us in the world has right now. If we choose to interact with God's spirit, with God, and follow certain processes like the questioning that was there for uh, uh, the experiment that I did on food, of who we are, what is our DNA, and, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, yeah, this whole process of life. So that can be applied to so many things. So, so that was the first part of this, uh, the last time's talk. And uh, the second part of it was um, the same thing. A lot of spiritual philosophies which are saying that, uh, uh, yeah, this earth is a, a test, uh, testing space. And uh, you're only here to go through suffering and you will have a reward later. But all of these people who were teaching of having a reward later, never have they truly experienced to explain what is so much better than what is here that you're talking of heaven or the afterlife. And then came that uh, 
place where uh, discussion where I said uh, I was explaining there are so many there are people on this planet who are experiencing heaven on earth. And unfortunately, most people in the world now, maybe more than 90%, uh, are experiencing hell on earth because of what's going on since yeah, the last 1,000 years with all of these controlling families and destructive technologies. Uh, so obviously, if you ask the suffering people, you know, do you want to come back here in the next life? They will say no. Many will say, if you can solve these problems, of course, we will come. Because Earth is such a beautiful place with one million different things to experience. And so many million things I have never experienced in my dreams and my afterlife also. And those people who are in uh, heaven, maybe some place like Kashmir, Leh, Ladakh, or, you know, where there are no fights and um, some spiritual communities where things are good. They say, yes, uh, there is no place to ex escape to. This is a beautiful uh, heaven on this planet itself. Besides a spirit body, I have a physical body also. So that's much more of creator or God that I'm working with. So why would I leave more of God that's having a great experience and go for moksha and all of that and uh, go to some part where I'm only a spirit body and I'm experiencing lesser of God. So this is, you'll be surprised that many of these uh, spiritual philosophies uh, which are deceptive have been taught on this planet since the last 3000 years. So in a much more detailed discussion sometime later after the summit, maybe I will give you all evidences of how this has happened. And those teachers and those books also, we think they are very, very holy even today. But one thing that is common between those and what's happening right now with the fourth industrial revolution, with, um, you know, the uh, World Economic Forum, uh, all of these people, you know, through various programs trying to kill off people, that is reduce the population of the world from 8 billion to just half billion people who are all slaves. And having all that vaccine ingredients, you know, metallic particles, graphene, aluminum and all within their body. So that they can be, can be controlled by 5G like robots, by these powerful families. Um, I hope all of you by now have seen our video making New Earth, where it's very clear that how over the last thousand years, these families have captured and destroyed so many things. And they are the same people who are realizing that humanity is going through a great awakening and understanding of all the deceptive science and tech. And we are trying to replace that science and tech with the right green science and tech. We are replacing the fraudulent government systems and uh, fake uh, representative democracy system with uh, truly uh, for the people participative democracy system. So, and there are a lot of details and a lot of reality and a lot of science and a lot of um, systems in this. It is uh, uh, not some philosophy. So this is where you match your left and right brain experiences. Where your left brain, which is the masculine energy, sees all these evidences and science and calculations and actually what's going on in the world now. And then with your right brain, it matches the experience, life experience that you're having. And the same people uh, who are trying to force uh, down our throats end times and reduce our population, they're also in the same uh, direction. Uh, they are trying to take away our bodies, uh, you know, that is kill us, of course, and let our souls go into some other space and uh, not come back here again. So, so that's that's the very shocking, shocking common program between certain spiritual teachings as old as 3,000 years and what is coming here. Now, maybe some of you have not heard this, but uh, I will uh, uh, very uh, shortly just uh, summarize something. Is that uh, every 6,000 years, civilization on this planet goes down and then it comes back again. Uh, so go to Google and search. Uh, how old is 
Roman civilization, Greek civilization, India civilization, Aborigines, Red Indians, meaning with their family names, with their lineages and families. You'd only go up to about 6,000 years back. Some will try to prove it's 6,200 or 400. Then you'll get some other research that there were civilizations in different places on this planet 12,000 years back. Then I'm uh, watching some videos where Indian in Indian Peninsula, there were civilizations, there were temples, homes and all 24,000 years back. Then again, you will see 36,000 years back, the pyramids and all of those things were constructed. So this is the multiple of 6,000 years. Uh, and this, uh, from whatever I've researched till now, this great flood and all is not happening right now. Even the pole shift is not happening right now. And Earth is not going to get burned with solar flares right now. Uh, but yeah, in 2040, so we've got about another 15 years. In 2040, um, a destructive event happens across the Earth. It's called the Phoenix event, where a lot of smoke, ash, dust, mud. And there are uh, photographs also of mudslides happening in, in the UK, in the main streets and other places. So mm, those are very old photographs. So every uh, 6,000 years, an event happens, a uh, destructive event happens on top of the surface of the Earth. And so before that, whichever civilizations know about it, they go underground in caves uh, to save themselves. Oh, I'm, I'm not very sure of the period, whether it's three days or seven days of destruction. But for all that smoke, ash and all that to clear, you can't even see the sun. So plants also don't grow well for some time. And then it seems things clear up and maybe after a year or something, people come back to the surface again. Now, evidence of this you'll see in many places across the world. And there are underground cities. Last time I explained, I the photograph is somewhere, but I, I don't have it right now. I don't know which folder on my laptop. There's a city in Turkey that's 20 levels underground, which is carved in one big mountain in a rock. And besides that, there are other places also where in rock, they have, why did they take the trouble when it's so easy to stay on top, uh, uh, to enjoy the sunlight, to get the flowing water, to, you know, grow with the trees, uh, grow trees and fruits and uh, experience the sky, experience the rain directly, experience sunlight. When that's so amazing, why would these people take so much trouble to dig holes? And, you know, with earlier it was manually done, 20 levels underground. Right. So then you see in various places on the girl, where there's three, four levels, five or 10 or 20, uh, there are underground cities. And uh, so, yeah, if uh, this event is going to happen again, um, it most probably may happen. It may not happen also. Then it would be wise to, you know, build underground homes and all. So we have 15 years for that. Um, but right now what's happening is that uh, these powerful uh, families across the earth, uh, they want that uh, before 2030 comes. And they've kept some amount of buffer because always plans get pushed behind. Uh, they make the efforts, we fight back. So that's going on right now, uh, all across the world. So... Uh, their effort is that to get rid of most of the people on this planet so that there are hardly anybody to go underground. And when things are better after some time and people can come up to the surface, uh, there aren't many people in different uh, locations across the planet. Because if there are many people across the planet, like how it is now, like how we started 6,000 years back, uh, with different indigenous communities everywhere, then it becomes very difficult to control those independent communities. So what I'm trying to say is that over the last 6,000 years, 3,000 years went with them not able to control people and then they started building their control systems. First with fake spiritual teachings and movements and gurus. All who, bottom line, you Please understand this. If you see a master, this 
freedom and you know if you want to control them there are two methods once if they believe in a higher power then you say higher power said then you come as a high priest and you said i higher power spoke to me because i am a high priest whole society says i am a high priest you are an ordinary person so i am speaking on behalf of god and god said do this do that god said you are my people god said the other people are not your our people go and kill them so i hope you understand that that this is not the real version of god that has created everything which will say uh, go kill one part of me don't kill one part of me and all of that so in this uh, controlling human beings it is if a person believes in this higher power call it god call it universal energy call it source call it a mean god who gets jealous uh, many of our books have that uh, god itself said i am a jealous god so uh, uh yeah so one uh, one is that where uh, if you believe there is a higher power and you have to respect it now uh, then is the religious system so that is also nobody has ever seen that god but these are these high priests who claim they have seen and can speak and talk and translate so again it's a master and a slave system whatever the commandments or this or that they say and we do now for those people who don't believe in this higher power and all i mean our god or nature we call them atheists for those people uh, there is the king and the king will say what to do and the king has got soldiers and if you don't do it the law and the soldiers will put you behind bars or bash you up so so this uh, uh, is the system that has been there for a very long time and these systems started getting built up you know about 3000 years back or even earlier when wars and all of that started so so this is what i am uh, asking everybody to be very uh, well aware of uh, be careful of not uh, getting entangled in a master slave system whether it's a religious system or it is a political system or a governance system or a monarchy system or a king there is some still queenship going on there in canada and uh, those people who are all following queen 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 uh, yeah they also have not yet got it that uh, they are god spirit and everybody is equal so uh, it's all uh i'd explain also universal law which states that uh, everything on this planet is equally belonging to every living soul on this planet so you already have your rights and your resources and all of these people who have made you poor and they are rich and they are bill gates is owning the most amount of land in usa and all of that these are all criminal systems that have defied what is natural law they have defied what is uh, universal law and what god has given to all of us so these are some very you know fundamental things to understand and uh, i will uh, pause here before i go on to today's next topic about uh, why it's so important for balancing your left and right brain and also your uh, energy centers your chakras we talked uh, specifically about the eighth and ninth chakra i'll get into that so if anybody has some questions or wants to make some comments up till on what i spoken up till now please go ahead please go ahead somesh ah uh, yes hello dad i wanted to ask you know, often we have discussed your voice that, is not uh, very clear can you come closer to the mic or yeah am i audible now yes better somesh yeah i was asking 
that uh, in a lot of ways we see that mother nature is perfect in the way she has created things at the same time how is it, how was it made possible for these people to override natural laws and create this kind of a destruction at a mass scale so um, so may have you seen the video making new earth yes yes okay so there do you remember the starting what was explained that there were all indigenous communities across the planet and uh, they all followed natural law now natural law means whatever is natural to this earth because uh, it's a different natural nature is different on mars and venus and saturn so for earth uh, we got uh, sea water that is salty it covers is they got plant kingdom animal kingdom human beings microbes all of that and one sun one moon how it interacts so that is nature on earth and those indigenous communities they live without breaking any of the natural laws that means they home they never made any uh, new molecules on this planet through you know uh, manipulative uh, methods for example their homes their food is of course grown naturally their homes were from the natural building materials they did not make uh, cement they did not uh, take out ore iron ore from the earth and make the iron rods which will get rusted after some time and put it inside concrete and composite structures that we do um, and many of these plastic things do not are not biodegradable for Thousand, ten thousand years, and all of that. So that's what uh, they live by natural law, making their own food, making their own natural garments, making their own wonderful arts, culture, and customs, which uh, we people are following. You know, even after three thousand years, like uh, so, you can imagine that uh, they were much more beautiful and amazing than us because we don't even have that much uh, intelligence to make so many of our new, you know. Uh, uh customs and festivals you know the sowing season the reaping season you ask a city, a city person what it is they don't know the science of it at all so what a shame so at that time all of these things uh, were there of course across the earth where they were self sufficient communities that means they had the complete science and tech of how to blend with nature and live with nature that means with god without causing any destruction and damage to god so they were all across the planet and then the the video goes on to showing that uh, some people who we label as capitalists they did not want to do all this natural work themselves they did not want to put their hands in the soil or you know uh, take out cotton and make thread and make cloth and stitch they didn't want to do any manual work they just decided to trade from one place to the other this person's clothes give it over there those herbs bring them here this jewel take it there that gold bring it here so these are the this is how it started across the globe with very cunning smart people uh and the problem was the rest of the people did not bother to see what these people are actually doing they are not behaving like us they are not doing any uh, you know earthly work like us natural work now they are digging holes in the earth uh from somewhere they have got some technology which uh, shows them how to make dig holes take out ore make metals then from that metal they make traveling machines which help them trade uh, from then the trade on horseback and you know uh walking and all is over and then you have all these machines so that machine made it more convenient to do this trading and then after setting up the trading business they just sat at bosses in their homes and then less fortunate people who were not given their share of what is naturally theirs by universal law um uh, they became their servants so another big part of it was uh, how they captured free flowing waters by putting dams and fooling people 
and the downstream rivers got choked up and over decades the civilizations were getting less and less water but they did not revolt and stop the dam from being made then the dam water they piped to cities and then they made the city their control space and the control space they started teaching all fake science god is a man god is a woman god is sitting there god is standing there god said this god said that uh so uh, this is how all of this came so all of it came through very detailed uh, manipulative methods by very cunning people and the sad part was the others did not check them why because the others used this very spiritual philosophy go with the flow do your own thing why are you bothered what's happening there so i give yes side as we are opening office in tarun yes thank you so uh, yeah so the the whole problem if you see it started 3000 years back and the lesson we are learning right now that is the harsh lesson we have had this in our blood in our veins for 3000 years uh trust god is taking care of everything who has put out this uh, philosophy trust god is taking care of everything it is the same people who have printed all those philosophy books and all right from the time you know uh, 1450 the gutenberg printing press that was the first printing press these manipulated families made and once they decided that most people are going to read books in different languages then they put all this fake science there before this they would say it verbally uh you yeah. know so so this philosophy has been going on uh, since a long time and before these people came and did all of their work you go to the you know uh, indigenous peoples over there they would not just sit and wait for things to happen they knew life they would participate in life if anything would go wrong they would correct it and they would be careful of people from outside they would honor somebody coming giving them something and giving something in return uh, of equal value that is called the barter system so uh, unfortunately this is what has been going on since a very long time and this is the biggest slap to humanity in the face that for centuries we have been sitting on our butt and uh, we have allowed these very deceptive and manipulative control systems a lot of damaging science and tech and right now the height of it is artificial intelligence ai and uh, what are people using ai for to make a presentation to do this to do that what after that what what will you get from making your presentation i will do my job what will you get from making your job i will get money what will you uh, what will you do with the money i have got to pay my rent in the city so all that this person is doing is using this now ai artificial intelligence is made by you know computer programming and machines they are just trying to mimic what our actions and what science and tech everything comes together they don't have the very deep intelligence uh and the capacity to think a new thought or a new creation like we do so they just use existing things that human beings have been doing from the past and um, i'll just come back to that why i said that uh, 5000 all the books that are written over the last 5000 years have lesser intelligence than what we have now if we do not look to all of that if we interact directly with god if we do our own experiments then we'll have more truth because now we are in an ascending you know uh, cycle um so i'll just correct that it's not a uh, uh, 2 5000 years it is you know our uh, from the lowest point where we call uh kaluk starts now we are in an ascending cycle so that is about uh 2400 years this side sorry uh 1200 years um uh, and 1200 plus the sandhi of incoming dwapara yug so that is uh, let's calculate this is the 13000 year cycle so from the lowest point in our consciousness uh it's 100 years then 1100 
So that's 1,200, 1,300, 400, 500. So 1,500 years ascending cycle, our intelligence is here. And the time period from when we were falling, you know, the, the descending cycle, that is also uh, this 1,500 years. So our intelligence kind of matches at this level. So the last uh, 3,000 years has been a time of lower intelligence where we went into wars where there's so much of you know bloodshed and uh robbery and you know various acts uh, of destruction manipulation and uh, barbarian kind of uh, uh, living so now we are uh, uh, coming from that drop in consciousness over 1500 years now we are coming in the rise in consciousness 1500 years and we are now, this is 2024. So we are 23 years into what's called the next after Kali Dwapar Yuga. So I follow certain calculations. Um, maybe you may have slightly different. But I match it with what people are going through, what the planet is going through. And uh, uh, people get a different, uh, they think that Kali Yuga is going on now. No, you are having such a hellish time because these destructive families have been destroying things over the last 3,000 years. Because they knew that this is a phase, ascending phase, where humanity is going to get more and more conscious and more and more closer towards God. And they are not going to to tolerate uh, manipulation, uh, master-slave system of people, you know, coming in between and uh, uh, distorting things and manipulating things sorry sir, sorry Dan. sorry to disturb one person who got disconnected uh, want to join back could you please accept him uh, okay is it amarnath yeah correct okay fine I accept him. Okay, okay thank you yeah. done thank you so uh yes so we are at uh, this this point where uh, we have to have the guts because anyway, what are your options? Uh, it is such a destructive time now and, and these government bodies with these global families are trying to kill you and uh, you better think of something new, better get some guts, better connect directly with everything that's happening and have courage to understand things and do the right corrective actions. So I just want to remind people that see, even I was doing, you know, believing certain things in the new age spiritual movement, uh, somewhere in 2010 to 2015, I was on some spiritual websites and you know, Facebook groups and all of that and connected with some people. And since then we were doing a lot of meditation for uh, healing the you know, uh, uh, damaged and angry minds of people and uh, big personalities on the planet. We were sent repair the damage to the ozone layer, sending hearts, you know, love to 8 billion people on the planet. So, me and many people across the planet uh, have been, you know, were doing that for five years. And after five years, I realized that it's every year has been getting from bad to worse. Then I went more into the science of all of this meditation and all that. And I could see that uh, how many hours are you meditating in a day? It's like half an hour, one hour. For that time, there's good energy across your body. But uh, after you stop that meditation, that energy is down. And what is the dominant energy of the thoughts of every human being on the planet? They are controlled by war, by the deception, by destructive technology, and exactly what's going on on the planet now. So unless we correct, then I said we have got to correct those things so that the destructive technologies stop and people start, you know, coming out of fear and having a better, you know, uh, 24 hours having a better, uh, calmer, peace state of mind. And that is going to bring the peace on the planet. So, contrary to what people thought, we can sit and meditate for one hour every day and this world, earth is going to become, you know, uh, more beautiful and more loving and all. 
see all of this uh, is known by these destructive uh, agencies and families across the planet they know much more science than <laughs> any one of us because they've been hiding the real sciences from you know for humanity for thousands of years and it is only those who, of us who will have the guts to leave those old manipulated books 90% of what are reading in the world no matter how heavy the book is and somebody will say the book is 1000 2000 3000 years old um i've shown people the path to accessing all uh, knowledge and wisdom in the here and now so those of you who have not watched the full video of that one day you know please watch it and then for deeper teachings, you can come to my one week retreat where we can discuss more things in detail. So where you can practice all of, you know, the uh, things. So now I'll just come to that part of practice. Um, yeah, so it, it is uh, very important for us uh, to also know the science and tech of how things are being destroyed, how we are being manipulated. Because that, you know, science and tech, it, it fights science and tech. You know, spiritual vibrations and all, they can, uh, uh, you know, fight and neutralize bad thoughts. They cannot, uh, you know, destroy science and tech. And people have been over decades praying and all and trying to change the corrupt and destructive mindsets of damaging people across the globe. But uh, they have not succeeded. And unfortunately, you see the proof of it with... Uh, you know, wars going on. Even now, there's a what we uh, 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 have, you know, kind of deduced. Uh, there's a cyclone happening in South of India, which seems to be not a, a normal cyclone. It is created by weather modification technology by these big agencies. Uh, so there are uh, a lot of destructive things. And uh, if we know how to neutralize these things or those agencies, uh, then that, you know, will give us better results. To understand uh, uh, things properly, we need to use our full faculties, right? We have a left brain and we have a right brain. So let's understand how to use that. What are the functions of that left and right brain? We we'll look at and uh, um, then how that is the first. Before even you are trying to balance your chakras from up to down or down to up or trying to strengthen whichever weaker chakras there in between. Even that uh, judgment of what is weak, what is strong, uh, how it can be done, uh, is there a method to do it uh, systematically that your left brain is going to tell you. Uh, is there a, should I just go and trust somebody uh, blindly, that is your right brain function. So how are you going to uh, match both of these things? It's good to trust some processes, but then I want to see how many people have done it. Uh, can I go and meet? How will I connect with these people? Uh, uh, is it on social media or through personal connections? So just to make the most basic decisions in life, if you have a good balance of left and right brain, you'll be able to do it better. So that's why if you have noticed, I hope everybody has had access. In all of these groups, I've shared my meditation. The left and right, if you've seen that sequence of the meditation, after doing the, you know, uh, bhastrikas, we are first doing left and right brain, the anandom vilom breathing, right? And only after that, we are doing the chanting. What does it mean? What I'm showing you now is the science of it. It is the left brain aspect of it. And what you'll practice, what you will experience by doing something actually, that is your right brain experience. So, uh, so I'll just bring up that uh, few slides and uh, we'll go into left and right brain. And then we'll go into... Okay, so... Wait, I will just start the presentation so that you don't get distracted with the next slide.
Okay, so can somebody unmute and just tell me if you can see this slide, blank slide, but on top it's written within the experience of life. Yes, it is visible. Okay. So, it says the left hemisphere is the side that is concerned only with our human condition. This is the, you know, it understands logic, mathematics, sequential relationships. That means one after the other, not parallel processing. And the parasympathetic, I think I have to correct that to sympathetic nervous system. Its main job is to place everything in this reality in a timeline. And uh, it is the thinking mind. This creates the illusion that we are finite and we are individual people and egos separated from one other and another and separate from God. So what is the other side of the brain? The right hemisphere, it represents the creative part of human biology. It includes all our expressions, music, rhythm, imagination, all these experiences that are body processes, that are mind processes, intuition, humor, dreams and the sympathetic nervous system. It is the feeling energy body. So this is what we call the feminine energy and the earlier one is what we call the masculine energy. It is there in every human being. Of course, women have more of the feminine energy because their feminine hormones are also connected to it. And then men have more of the masculine energy because the masculine hormones are connected to it. The right uh, hemisphere understands we are eternal that means no time connected in unity to one another to existence and to god so now the important part is that each of us has to have some balance of this if we have left 100 percent like uh, i will just uh, in this uh, movie uh, video a stroke of insight it's a tedx talk by a neuroscientist where she got a brain stroke and when she got a brain stroke the left hemisphere of hers shut down so then time logic sequence all of those things were not operating in her body then only the being eternal there being no time connected to everything and everyone and unity with God and all of that. Uh, you should see that video. It's called A Stroke of Insight. Please note that down. A Stroke of Insight by I think her name was Jill uh, something. If somebody remembers the name, uh, please, uh, you can say that. Um, on YouTube, we'll get it. Just put A Stroke of Insight. So you will see in that as she's going through that process, she feels that her hand is merged into the wall and she's stuck over there. She cannot speak words. She's just collapsing at one place because she's in unity with that sofa or wherever she was sitting. And it completely disables her. So this is just a warning that, yeah, if you will go fully on one side, then you will not be able to function. If you will go totally on the left hemisphere, then you'll always be thinking scientific this, that you will not be uh, experiencing and doing things. So uh, music, rhythm, imagination, intuition, humor, dreams, and so many things will be missing from your life. So we, have all, we all understand that if you have either of these two operating and the other not operating, then you're not even, uh, can't even be considered as human behavior. So what happens is sometimes people have more of the feminine and then some people have more of the masculine. So when you go on one side, uh, then you get more of its qualities, but you lose the qualities of the other side. So we'll just look at these left and right brain uh, very quickly. This is what I showed at the retreat. It's also there in the one day life transformation program. I hope you all have seen it. So, by us human beings with our left and right brain being able to experience these what we call extremes or polarities, left and right, 
we get the advantage of having more experiences and uh, this is the same thing this is the god energy this is the god within us who has designed all of this so that we have the maximum amount of experiences and then within those experiences we will choose it's up to us because each one of us is god spirit and with god intelligence the only thing is that our god intelligence has been uh, you know flushed down the toilet blocked destroyed manipulated since the last 3 4000 years uh so now we are trying to get that back and you're going to get it back more if you go towards nature and come out and you know stop looking at all this tv and reading all the manipulative and fake science books so working directly and understanding all of this on the left is all these masculine parameters and right is feminine and in the retreat i gave some examples even you know you trying to build a chair within the process of building the chair you have to use masculine and feminine energies at in in sequence uh it's similar like that you know bhakti karma and gyana so first to make a chair you don't just start calculating you know the angles and the strength of the load bearing first you start with the actually start with the feminine energy that i feel that i must be rested and then i must be in this uh, position with my legs dangling down so that i don't have to stand all day so a chair is a place of rest if i want to be upright a bed is a place of rest if i want to be horizontal so first that experience comes of sitting up and not being horizontal so that's the feminine need and energy that's the experience that you're looking for so you start with feminine energy to make a chair to bake a cake to buy a home home means a, a place of residence so uh, yeah that is in that creative process also that uh, what i explain in detail first chakra is the crown chakra where these ideas and feeling of what we want comes then we take it into the next step is sacred geometry where we start deciding so for the chair the person will decide what is the thickness if i use this kind of wood i need so much thickness for a 120 person kilo person to sit on the chair i'll have to have four legs or of this diameter and all of that so uh so this is all of us we'll be able to make a amazing chair and design an amazing house or even build an amazing house if we are able to use these energies by ourselves it's so if you disrespect any of these uh what are these capacities or properties and you do not engage with them you will lose their capacity of doing certain things it's important you know straight lines is very important sometime when you are trying to find the shortest distance and you are not having enough time to go somewhere the straight path is what you want when another day that uh, you're not in a hurry you like to walk little here and there and meet some people on the way then probably circles or curves is going to serve you so so this is the important thing that i shared if any of us disrespects or hates any of these qualities you will lose their properties and their value in life so if you are looking for life mastery and life balance then understand the purpose of all of these and you can use them when you want okay so that's freedom is there in that as well so now here some uh, yeah, a very important writing are uh, this is a channel message from the higher ascended masters a finest potential is found in weaving and balancing of the divine feminine and divine masculine energies within ourselves both men and women carry feminine and masculine wisdom and tools however they sometimes uh, one or both of these energies is out of balance silenced wounded misunderstood or disrespected now what is the difference between feminine and masculine and divine feminine and divine masculine so divine means of course you all would already understand with the word it is aspiring to uh,
do not cause harm to any human beings. Uh, if they don't cause harm to any animals, they will call them even more divine. If somebody, besides not causing harm to human beings and animals, they don't cause harm to plants also and to the air also or to the soil also, you'll call them the most divine. So they have compassion for all things, the finer manifestations of God. So this divine masculine and feminine is that aspect of ourselves now in the making or in the future where we are more compassionate and we can live lives without with the least amount of destruction to other species and the earth and other people, even not creating you know bad energy with other people. So it says, regardless of your past experiences and choices, you always have the option of embracing each of these energies where they are now in your life and understanding what they need to become more whole and integrated within you for a more balanced divine version of yourself. When working in harmony, the sacred union of the divine feminine and masculine can unite, heal and create anything. And this is also, if you can remember that creative process, uh, because understanding that creative process and the steps that I put in, that is moving from a seven chakra system to energizing a nine chakra system, it came out of my experiments of both masculine and feminine. When I said certain things are missing in our energy system, you know, uh, in our bodies, certain consciousness is missing towards other species on the planet, towards, uh, uh, you know, creating new things. There's a lack of energy. Uh, so that was the first, uh, you know, need and a feminine energy within myself. Then I started to say, where could it be missing in our chakra system? So then my masculine energy started working and calculating chakra frequencies and where it should be. So I used that both masculine and feminine energy to get those nine chakras and the sounds and all of that. So you'll be able, if you use these masculine and feminine energies, you'll be able to do more. And over here they say, can unite, heal and create anything. So now we are here, uh, we need to create a lot of amazing things for our future, for our freedom, for our better health, to stop the destruction of this planet and all of that. And uh, the more you master these energies and use them, you'll be able to do new things which you never did before. This energy created by this balance union catalyzes the forces of creation into manifestation. Now, it's not something that there are forces that are there outside and all of that. That force is in your every breath. And as you are working, you are working also as the hand of God. Uh, through your, of course, <coughs> God in creation is so massive. But all of us are uh, connected. Uh, we have always been connected. There has never ever been se any separation right from the starting of creation. And there will never be any separation. It's all, uh, you know, connected through energy and through our soul and our higher self and all of that. So through all those energies, uh, the forces of creation uh, come into manifestation. The new ideas we speak and that we start working on. So that's, uh, you know, creation coming into manifestation. The love that is born of this union is that of the unconditional sacred heart of divine source. By balancing, healing, honoring and integrating our divine feminine and divine masculine energies, we write a new future for ourselves, humanity and this planet. So uh, this is my uh, talk at the Second World Parliament on Spirituality, where I explain that the, the video is there uh, on my YouTube channel. You can watch it. Um, they had asked me to speak on you know, global peace. And I said, uh, there isn't going to be uh, any global peace till we first heal the divide between our own selves. Uh, so it was unity within, uh, you know, uh, brings, you know, unity outside. So I said, first of all, every man and woman, they have to 
uh, heal that damaged part of their masculine and feminine energies so that they are able to respect both of them. And uh, then, you know, a man who respects his own masculine and feminine energy um, truly and understands feminine energy, then he is able to respect the feminine energy in a woman also uh, and respect and give it honor. So when we don't do that, then it is very apparent that in the person, they do not appreciate feminine energy of their own self. So I said, first is the healing of every human being within themselves, within the left and right brain. Once unity consciousness comes over there, then they will talk and speak in ways that creates unity between men and women in families, in society, and then across cultures, across beliefs and across countries. So, mm -hmm. so this is exactly, you know, what, what is uh, being expressed over here. We create a new future for ourselves. Uh, so this is at the level of uh, uh, philosophy and the level of good energy and the level of higher consciousness and future. But I converted it in that talk to something very doable and understandable for every human being. Now, I know just to talk, you know, uh, it's, it has got certain signs, but more of it comes through uh, practicing all those things. So I won't spend too much time here. You all know about this uh, uh, every seven years, how our energy in different energy centers matures. I'll just go to uh, wait one part. Let me see. Uh, yes, I wanted to come to the uh, place where we are talking of the eighth and ninth chakra. I want to talk about that. Okay, this is a very nice slide also. Uh, which I don't think I had shown the last time. Yes. And this is on my spiritual website. So it's just for you to relate to this word about uh, uh, the meaning of spirituality. Maybe you will get some deeper understanding through these couple of slides. Yeah, it says, what is uh, spirituality and what is being spiritual? When you begin to have a growing personal awareness, you are a free individual spirit. But you know you are still connected to everything else around you, be it other people, animals, birds, elements, or the earth. And this is the kind of experience that I had, you know, when I was 21 years old. Uh, feeling very connected to everything. You begin to understand that your every action affects everything and everyone else around you. You know that this happens because everything around you has its own life force too and you are indeed all connected by invisible strands of energy whether we call it soul, spirit, higher self, our monadic self, our soul family, in this connecting web, when you do good, it benefits all. When you do bad, it hurts all. So you begin to see that all life on earth is symbiotic, meaning there's a give and take a relationship. Uh, where a mutual give and take happens at every step, without which life is not possible. Like for us human beings, if there were no plants on this planet, we would not be able to have physical bodies. So that's why on Venus and all they say now there are only spirit bodies. There's no food over there, neither there's there on Mars. So there's no possibility of having a physical body there. So thankfully in this planet, we can have that experience. You eat food and remain alive because plants and animals give up their life for you. You see the flow of life. You see the elements of earth, water, fire, air, space making the body of the plants uh, that you eat. You introspect and begin to see that there is a greater interconnectedness to everything and you suspect that this is all as per design of a great spirit and you wonder if this great spirit is God. This is what I call spiritual awareness where you basically see the spirit in everything. Uh, 
spiritual awareness is not practices and all of that practices are tools that will take you into experiences of spirit so whether it is yoga or chanting or any other practices being spiritual is your own personal journey where you develop your conduct in thoughts words and deeds so that you become aligned with benefiting from as well as serving all symbiotic law life on earth so this is what i'm talking about natural law we begin to understand that mother earth has her own living body that stretches from the core of her belly to the heavenly skies and in this capacity she is called gaia who supports all forms of life we make a commitment to protect and sustain her for it is in the interest of all human beings as well as in the interest of all other life forms on earth that live upon her whenever you think or act within this frame of mind you are deeply seated in the subject of spirituality that's actually spirit flowing in everything that is connected with you and supporting your life spirituality is also the art and science of going within and speaking to your own spirit using techniques of meditation or, or the breath or yoga or dhyana or kriyas so this is the the experience with spirit which i call the tools these techniques quieten the mind chatter of your ego and allow your spirit to speak to you it helps you get in touch with your feelings that begin to express themselves in some creative way like poetry song so these are all the types of expressions that we have uh, or your chosen type of work or you say some you know it's your mission or calling in life you feel there's a deeper meaning to life and all that you are experiencing and you keep your intention and open mind to experience more and more of existence as you go along and existence is what i call god manifest so you are trying to experience more and more of god in all shapes and forms and you hear of this being called spiritual evolution lastly is in spirituality the science and experience so the science is the left brain and experience is the right brain of great spirit so you will be able to uh, experience more of creation creativity god and all of that if you develop both your left and right brain uh, to the best uh, capability So now I'll just say a few things about it, and then I will go into that eighth and ninth chakra. Oh, yeah. So, so this uh, understanding is uh, what we have to have in our lives spiritually, and then the the morning meditation practice that will also help you. uh to achieve this uh which is the left and right nostril breathing and if you do that for a longer time uh that part which is um uh, subdued or you know uh, less a functioning that will start coming up to balance with your dominant side so one is doing this practice the other is um you know uh, looking at that once you watch the recording again when you see the parameters of masculine and feminine and the different parameters uh you have to do an audit yourself that means you have to score from 0 to 10 okay that means which of these properties i have and which properties i don't have so on the uh, on the properties where you are scoring lesser that means uh, generally for men they have lesser intuition so they will say oh my intuition is pretty hopeless so they put like 3 over there and they may say that my control is very good i keep everything going as per my plan and all of that i'm good at designing at planning things that's a masculine energy they'll give themselves a score of 8 or 9 and in controlling how things go to achieve the plan they may say yeah more or less i'm able to do like i'll put 8 but intuition i don't have 
uh, it's three. And typically a person will say that when they are suffering from a lack of that property, they will actually say that intuition doesn't serve much in life. I, I don't see the point of what does intuition do. So that's a denial of that energy. And whatever once you say such statements uh, that uh, uh, I don't see what uh, intuitive people do, uh, you have to actually meet with intuitive people and see so many amazing things in life. They get to know beforehand. They come to know things in a, a more holistic way at the right time because of intuition. So if you are going to make statements like that, mm, so these are the two checks. Okay, the moment in that chart you say, I don't like this, it is a direct reflection that in your energy system, you are lacking that function and property. And uh, you will lose all those things in life. So you're not going to be reaching anywhere divine, masculine, feminine. Uh, you're reaching your highest potential and all of that. It's not going to be happening. You can meditate and, you know, chant how much you want. Uh, there are, yeah, there are teachings, like I said, since 3000 years. And people have been doing those things and still they are not, they are, you know, lifetime after lifetime, still they are in that loop of not being able to do everything that they wanted to do in their lifetimes. So, and it's another trap also that, uh, uh, which have been taught by these people that why do you need to do this? Why do you need to do that? The, the straight uh, answer from you that should be coming as God's spirit is that. I choose at this point of time. I have dreamed this. I want to achieve it. And I just want to experience that. It's not about some ego going up the ladder and all. It's a beautiful uh, thing. If you uh, want to experience a life without uh, suffering because there's enough finances, then that is a genuine need. And you say at this point in time, I would like to experience uh, abundant finances in my life. And uh, that is God speaking. Right, and then you there are things that you will need to do to do all of those things. There are now the problem is in this world that is rigged so badly that the entire system is corrupted. You may fall in the trap of using one of the system tools to get your money. So somebody is going to go and take a job in a banking system where all the money, paper money in the world is completely fake. So you have to have this left and right balance at that time when taking up, you know, the tools and the roots to give yourself those experiences uh, that you say, as God's spirit, I want to have those experiences. So, so at some time, you do need to know the science and tech of this planet. You need to know natural law. And so that's what we're doing right now. We're trying to achieve many things that we want not in the control matrix cities of fake science and destructive science, but in the decentralized systems, in villages, in uh, 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 our own community setups. We are trying to have all better health, better life experience, green jobs, healthy water, healthy food, natural body products, natural home products, natural fabric, uh, more free time. Uh, this is all that. Uh, these are the things that uh, you know uh, every human being uh, really deserves to have a beautiful. Uh, God experience on this planet and uh, so uh, yeah so people uh, when you have that uh, you know uh, uh, need for something whether it is money or it is an experience and it is a little bit difficult to get it then the same mind manipulators and their philosophies will come to you and tell you uh, don't be so goal driven uh, if you can't achieve it, take it easy. Go with the flow. You don't need to do everything in life. Every dream doesn't come true. You, you will listen to all of these things. If a dream is beautiful, uh, then why not uh, develop skills to, you know, have that experience? So, uh, yeah, so then, um, so they will kind of, uh, that's what's going on right now in the world. Uh, give up this, give up that, uh, settle for something lesser. Uh, now, you if you are, uh, you know, running too hectic in life, then of course you can slow down and say, settle for easier things. But if that's not the case, then please be careful about uh, people who uh, tell you to, uh, you know, give up or it's not uh, necessary to achieve some beautiful things that you want in life. Uh, now, 
I'm not saying our friends and family and even you know some coaches are evil people. What I'm saying is uh, they have not figured out the the deep deception of the last three thousand years. That's still going on. So the reality is that uh, all of us uh, should be free to have our dreams and to develop the skills and to do all of these things. And this is what we are teaching through our New Earth Summit and through all of these programs. That is how to use green uh, science and tech, things that are not harmful to, to other people's health, to other species on the planet, uh, to the environment of this planet. That is real. Uh, that's deep wisdom and intelligence and creativity. And that is basically what is spirituality because you are understanding how other spirits on this planet work. You are understanding natural law that is uh, that is actually creator flowing in everything. So this is the real ascension and the real evolution that uh, uh, is actually uh, uh, what we can have. And uh, uh, yeah, that's why I do all of this uh, to help people understand all of these uh, aspects so they can make some good choices. So now uh, coming to that uh, eighth and ninth chakra. So it is not that it's somewhere on top and down. It is uh, one of them was we know our heart chakra over here, which I call the low heart, low heart because it is um, mm -hmm. connecting more with people and our families and humanity. My heart is connecting with more of, uh, you know, other species also on the planet uh, who are very integral to maintaining life on this planet. So I will open that uh, slide now and show uh, uh, three, four of the slides. And then uh, we'll have some, uh, you know, deeper discussion on that. And then I'm sure some of you will have questions on it so we can. I will take up those questions. Okay, now I can see that screen. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if this is uh, visible now to everybody, then that's fine. Uh, this, please, let, please let me know. It says here the eighth chakra is at the Hara region of the body that meditators uh, concern uh, second, uh, concentrate on for belly breathing. Uh, it is also called the Dantian uh, region that martial arts develop, martial artists develop. It is two inches below the navel. It is a combination of the chakra above it which is the Manipur Chakra, which controls the sense of self, that is who I am and what I am capable of. And the chakra below it is the Swadhisthana Chakra, which controls the masculine, feminine, creative and collaborative energy and sexual energy as well. The next paragraph says, when this chakra is developed, it gives the person power in doing new creative things on their own or at a group of people who have developed the same chakra it is by using this chakra that we will be able to create new living spaces that meet all our creative and holistic requirements like a happy and balanced life in an eco-village through the collaboration of like-minded people. This chakra is developed through thoughts, meditation, breathing techniques, using food, using colors. So I'll talk a little bit about that after we see these few slides. Uh, but most powerfully than all of these practices, it happens by doing those activities daily that contribute towards making our new holistic living spaces. Please see my video, Making New Earth. It has all those things that are needed to manifest our new holistic living spaces. And even if some of those things are missing, then I invite all of you to also put uh, you know, your ideas in all of the actions that need to be done to make those holistic spaces uh, in better design and better functionality for everyone. So understanding those activities in the video, thinking about them and getting yourself to those activities will build up that chakra. Without that chakra being developed to some extent, uh, people will not be able to live in an eco-village 
and after being there for 2 3 months they will give all sorts of excuses and go back to their comfy city lives just to get slow killed peacefully by the uh, these global forces more about which thoughts uh, meditation techniques uh, uh, yeah i explained in the goa retreat i will repeat some things now then the ninth chakra is the higher heart that is besides human beings uh, uh, we connect with nature so that color is green in color it gets developed when you have equal amount of love and respect for nature around you uh, now this through the feminine side it would be going and sitting in nature uh, just spending time there cutting off from the world looking at different butterflies bees trees so you are take going to take yourself through an experience so yeah looking at nature around you the problem with most human beings so far they have mostly developed their lower heart which is pink in color because they put family community and all human beings on high importance and a pedestal with literally no love and respect for other species on the planet no respect for plants except to grow and eat the ones they want no respect for butterflies bee birds bees wild animals so they don't mind destroying all of them now this has caused a lot of destruction to natural law of god on this planet and the integrated ecosystems of earth which is now showing up as the destruction of all the five elements in our environment and it is also causing biological sicknesses for human beings please see my videos dharma and the earth keepers and the threefold path of ahimsa uh yeah they are on my youtube channels so dharma and the earth keepers is how we are the only species on the planet who have broken natural law and we have destroyed earth water fire air space and that's why so many destructive things are happening to us it is natural law it is not mother nature has got a vengeance after 2000 years 3000 years and at a particular time she will do this and that it is it is basic science and equation if you look from it from a masculine perspective you'll be able to calculate all those 10000 trillion equations that have caused destruction to the earth and then the degrading of all the elements and why the tornado natural tornadoes and Uh, tsunamis and earthquakes are going to happen and if you're not such a scientist then you will experience these things happening uh, through your feminine energy so no other species has done this destruction they drink the water and they naturally you know pee it out into the natural place they're supposed to pee it out but we will take the water and we'll put toxic chemicals in it and put make some things new on the planet that are out of natural law and that's how we uh break down this planet uh and create problems for ourselves also three four part of ahimsa is non violence to human beings by doing all the nonsense we do to kill ourselves uh, unknowingly through food through cosmetics through stressed out jobs to many things then non violence to animals is the second part and third part is non violence to mother earth which is all the environmental destruction so now i will yeah uh, wind up this part and we can discuss uh, some of you wanted to talk more about uh, these two energy centers so the first part is development of which comes first so let's focus on two things the higher heart is for nature appreciation and love and interaction at the level of natural law happening in nature it's not how you think things in nature should work so uh it's not logic it is science so the more you learn and you live with nature you will understand how it works and then you'll be able to uh, speak about it or interact with it the second uh, part was uh, the collaborative part of energy to create a new uh, strong things in a powerful way so that is that hara chakra between our sense of uh, self that means i am or i am going to be uh, an organic farmer i am going to be in an eco village uh, 
So that is the part of your new sense of being. And to do that, you will have to uh, do uh, very creative things uh, to achieve that. But you have to understand that this is the second part. If you don't have, you know, if you don't have or develop the appreciation towards nature, then you will not look for green science and tech, right? Then you will try to go and create something that doesn't have green science and tech. So developing this higher heart is uh, the first step. And it is also in uh, accordance with the uh, pyramid of, you know, how things are structured on this planet. Uh, so first, you know that, of course, the plants to have their life, they have to be uh, proper soil, nutrient rich soil, microorganisms in the soil. So water should be natural, all of that. So right from the building structures of earth to give plants, because plants, you know, good plants give us good food, it gives us good medicine, it gives us good natural cosmetics, which are healthy for us, it gives us nice natural homes. If we plant the right kind of trees at the right kind of time, then that wood comes up in time for us to build uh, natural homes as per our home expansion plan, as per our community growth plan. So, uh, collaborating to do the, uh, you know, who will work together and all that comes later. But first comes the green science and tech. So, thoughts, what I said, uh, thoughts, words and deeds. So, that's how things happen from the higher dimensions to the physical dimensions. So, yeah, um, if some people are having difficulty having uh, green thoughts, then you can sit away, leave your city and go and take a 15-day vacation in a village or a countryside and just go and live there and be part of the community. If you will sit in your room, if you will pay somebody their rent and sit in your room and be on the internet and be reading some book, it's your time out and all of that, you are not going to get into science and tech. You have to go there. You have to say, uh, I want to see the place. I want to know the kind of work you're doing. I want to help you with the work. So some of us have been who have been going to the villages. We go to some homestays and we help those people there with their daily work. We grow plants. We harvest along with them. We do some whatever drying of uh, uh, the fruit and spices. Then uh, we help them repair their homes. And when we do all of these things that are natural uh, over there, then we start understanding natural law and natural science. Then we, we see which animals they're keeping for what purpose. Uh, if the ha animals have some health issues, then we try to fix those. So, so, yeah, so that's one way for a person who doesn't have uh, green tech in their uh, system uh, or they've not been exposed to it then you can start by this. Go to a place where it is quite similar to where you want to live with a bigger community uh, and go and do some uh, community service. Be on the ground, be bare feet. Just follow their, if it's a you know natural uh, a village, follow their customs, practices and be there maybe for two, three months also. Three months is a good time where you will pick up a lot of things. So... Uh, so you understood that only after understanding the science and take your friends also with you uh, because it's going to be difficult once you go and have that experience and come back to your city and tell your friends, let's go and make an eco village. You know, they are not going to understand uh, what you have learned and they won't be at that level of collaboration. So take them also along and uh, have these experiences. So once you have that science and tech, then you see how it's basically by seeing how these very simple villagers, so they're not educated, they did not watch YouTube videos and they did not do this and that and they did not go to university, they didn't do a management degree and all. But uh, in such simple ways, they are managing their entire lives, taking care of their health and doing so many amazing things. So, um, yeah, so uh, this is... Uh, 
the kind of uh, learning you have to go through. Uh, and, and this will give you the confidence, right? You're looking for confidence in your uh, lower chakra between your Manipur and your creativity. Uh, the confidence in doing something new is going to come from the experience that you get from there. If you don't have that experience, you're not going to have the confidence. So I came to Goa and I directly, uh, I, I started, how did I get the confidence of writing my book, Become Healthy or Extinct? Because for the previous five years, I was treating some of the most sick people that, you know, even doctors and Ayurveda and homeopathy and all could not fix. So after having that kind of confidence and uh, science and practice with me and experience, then I had the confidence of writing a book. And there were so many of my friends and, uh, you know, even uh, family and uh, other people who knew me who had said, you have never written a book in your life. Do you, did you did a, do a course on a, a book writing? So I said, no. They said, have you spoken to people who have written books and all that? Uh, I said, no. Uh, then they said, how are you just going to go to go and write a book? And you're saying that it's going to be a book that will be read by, you know, everyone. It will be very valuable to everybody on health. And people will like it so much, they'll forward it to many people. These are all your dreams. So see, I made these dreams myself. Uh, because go to everyone, meaning uh, because I wanted healthcare to, you know, the level at which I understood and learned healthcare, I wanted to give it to others, the integrative natural medicine uh, model. So, because I had done those five years, so I had the confidence on my own to do this. I do, yeah, I did. Uh, once I came here, I didn't know what, you know, how to write prefaces and all. So, I downloaded some, you know, uh, good books and saw what a preface is. I saw what a forward is. I saw how this and that. And I got, you know, one, one dozen uh, examples. And I said, okay, that's good enough. This is just formatting the book. So, that's why I said, okay, I'll keep it very simple. Uh, for you know everyday person and if you notice I have not had anything bold and you know uh, designed my paragraph it's just straight straight and I put big font in it for the benefit of people who have you know glasses and all of that so um, uh, yeah so I, I learned these things on the go but the science and everything I had with me so if you have the science uh, then you are going to be very confident <clears throat> Then your lower chakra automatically starts developing it. Then through activity, yeah, you are going to do it. So first, of course, is going to be the thoughts of uh, once you have the signs and you know that other people have the signs, that is your friends. If you made the mistake of not giving your friends that experience, then you have to find local people in that place who will collaborate with you. Uh, okay. So, yeah, so the thoughts, the words and the deeds of that lower chakra also, they will start coming from your, uh, how much work you have done with your green science and tech. So this is just one example I gave of uh, a very common one that I give because that's the uh, way I see the solution for uh, most people because cities are going to get more and more toxic and more and more controlled and more and more destructive. So yeah, this is one example of how to use the um, the high heart chakra and the uh, hara chakra the, for your creativity. That means doing some things that you never did earlier in life. Uh, sitting with a group of people also discussing these things. That's another way. Um, yeah, the first thing uh, I would I'm suggesting to everybody is watch the video making new earth completely. And share it with those kind of people who you want to collaborate with. Because when the science and tech is common, then people collaborate. When it's not common, people are not able to collaborate. And that's why I'm telling people, you know, this is not the greatest uh, video on these topics on the planet. But it does connect all of these things. So that's what's great about the video. But the quality of uh, many of these things can be improved. So please watch the video. You may have expertise in some things. Give us feedback so we can improve that part of the video. And as the new editions of the video go out, it should be more powerful. It should be more informative. It should be able to convert people from the city to understand how toxic that is and come to the real collaborative space where people are free, where they use natural law 
and they uh, don't damage the earth and other species. So, yeah, this is uh, one example. So now I will stop at this and those of you who want to take up some other examples, maybe something that you're working on right now, if you have some questions on this, you can please go ahead and ask. So now, uh, these are some of the steps of making new earth. What I'm just engaging in right now from uh, 5th of uh, December to 19th of December, the new earth summit, right? So I had put that uh, invite of the summit in a certain method and way. In fact, I thought there would be some disturbances in society and uh, that would happen by, you know, end of November uh, and they were planned but they are a bit delayed. So uh, we are getting some more time to, you know, do uh, uh, some good things. Um, so otherwise, normally I would be doing the uh, summit from 1st of November to 30th of November. But uh, now that uh, uh, that seriousness of things are not happening, I said, okay, let me do it in December, but you know that uh, December, once it's 20th December, everybody's in a festive time and Christmas and all of that. So I just thought, okay, for the first time, uh, why don't, don't I do the summit in 15 days and have a morning session for two hours and an evening session for two hours. So this is how you can, you know, still fulfill your purpose, make some changes and modifications as per the situation. And uh, uh, so... This so I sent out the invite uh, first time I've sent out an invite uh, with the topic names but without all the panelists. So I'm still in the process of getting people on the panel, and so I just put it out that way that you know here are some of the panelists, and if you are an expert and panelist, so you want to nominate others, uh, please go ahead. And uh, the way I put out the energy, so the energy is coming back. So there are new people sometime, and you know uh, this time. And some more experts who are connecting uh, just to uh, be on the summit because they have got good science and tech. And I know as they get involved with us and they, then the next step, they'll see making new art and probably they'll take this to their, you know, spaces. So this is how that uh, collaborative, uh, you know, thing happens. So uh, I'm at this phase where I'm collaborating with people and bringing in people that I never knew earlier, okay, from all parts of this country. So every one of us can achieve all of these things at every step if we will use our left and right brain properly. So, yeah, so this, this New Earth uh, Summit also is part of those steps to getting the right, uh, the, the green experts inside uh, with us, uh, giving them a chance to show their green science and tech. And then... Uh, if some of that is missed in the Making New Earth video, it will get added to that. Then uh, as these people uh, see that video and they want to implement these systems in an organized way, then they can start uh, learning how to make uh, their groups, Earthkeeper groups in the cities and all that they are. And that's how this entire project, Making New Earth, will go forward. So... Uh, yeah, there are many steps towards this, but I just wanted to share that this is one creative step of making new earth. It's not just a summit where we are just giving out information. If you design it uh, in the right way, uh, with very clear um, ideas and the way it should turn out, then it will turn out that way. And sometimes you can do some parts. Sometimes it will require other people to do some parts. Sometimes it will require a whole lot of other people and new people to also manifest these things. So don't be afraid of any of these things which you have never done in your life before. <laughs> now is the time to try uh, all these new things, discuss these ideas with one another and yeah, bring new and good things to everyone on the planet. Somebody had unmuted it and wanted to say something. Please go ahead.
Yes, reading. Uh, yeah. So, thanks, uh, Meenal, for that. Uh, the stroke of insight video was by Jill Bolt Taylor, and uh, Asta has given to the link. Also, it's there in the chat. So, some of you can copy that. It's a wonderful video. Um. Okay, so Amarnath is please demonstrate some techniques to balance both sides of the brain. So Amarnath, yes, uh, please watch the my video what I have shared on uh, uh, all of the channels, the Daryl uh, the Daryl Life Transformation Program uh, group on uh, WhatsApp or if you are on Telegram. Okay, I also shared it on my uh, Daryl Disuda channel on. Uh, WhatsApp and on Telegram. Today's session I didn't share on my main channel because it's a little deeper than last time's first session. Uh, so yeah, the the one of the steps over there is uh, before doing your left and right nostril breathing, you're just activating energy in the body and clearing your nose. So there are about 20, you know, bhastrikas that you do. And by the time you do that, your energy, spine energy is also open. There's a little bit of heat in your body. And uh, then uh, after that, uh, the next step is doing your left and right nostril breathing. So left nostril breathe in, then right out, right? then right in. However, you want to keep your finger, two fingers here, keep like this. Then it comes out like this, breathe out very, very slowly at a pace that is comfortable to you. Okay. So the longer you do this breathing, the more balance you will have in left and right. So this is one technique. Now the other technique is to uh, use if you want to develop your, you know, your right brain, then you have to use more of your left hand. So your right brain is your feminine energy. Then you have to use your left hand more. And see in that uh, chart of masculine, feminine, uh, you have to draw artwork that is not so much straight lines, but a lot of curves. So these are two techniques, two energies that will work on your right brain. That is drawing more artwork with your left hand. Then, so that's about using your hands. Now, one more thing is, uh, if your masculine energy is more, you will be speaking faster and trying to put out a lot more information in a shorter period of time. Now, generally on programs like this, I, yeah, because it's only, we have decided two hours and we don't have all day long and I want to complete certain things at least. So sometimes I'm a little bit quick. Otherwise, if you want to have more and have feminine energy in your body, you have to speak more slowly, but more artistically. Uh, pronounce, it, pronounce your words uh, more clearly. And uh, the person who's in front of you, you have to give them a more enjoyable experience of your communication. So that could be with your eyes going up and down, with you know facial expressions, with your uh, tone going up and down, more modulating, with hand gestures, with body, you know, different uh, uh, yeah poses. So that is more feminine, more indulging, more expressive expressive energy. And you will see that's uh, sometimes how, yeah, more women will be more slow, uh, more loving, more expressive. Of course, when a man tries to use that energy, it's not that you're going to behave like a woman, but certain parameters at least you can do. So speaking slowly, artistically, and pronouncing your words well, Engaging completely with the person in front of you, uh, that is a more, uh, that's a way of building your own feminine energy. Um, yeah. Then also the next uh, thing is uh, uh, speaking faster and speaking slower. This I, can, uh, I shared with you. Then also uh, activities. If you're doing uh, activities very quickly in a hurry, then you're using more of your left brain and your coordination and more masculine energy. So if you slow down doing physical activities, that will go more towards the feminine energy side. 
So, yes. Okay, and then finally, um, doing a work uh, with the earth, uh, using your body. So that's why, you know, dancing uh, is uh, artistically is more a uh, feminine energy. Working more with the soil, uh, digging soil, putting seeds, growing plants, all of this in a very enjoyable, slow way, that is feminine. Uh, connecting with the earth, using natural building materials, building a home, uh, that is feminine energy. So we're in a, in a home, uh, the part of designing the home, designing the architecture and this and rooms and all of that, that is your masculine energy. Straight lines, weights, point, connecting things, mathematics and uh, science, all of that, left brain energy. And then uh, you can, uh, uh, if you don't want to use that energy, give somebody else to design your house. And when the design comes out, you go and build it with your own hands. That is feminine energy. Okay, so overall remember that uh, when you indulge with all the ideas, uh, and you bring it out in a uh, use your body okay so this is uh, tantra so now i'll just share uh, uh, three things uh, definitions which are very deep so mantra yantra and tantra so mantra is when consciousness uh, uses sound to experience and do things Consciousness meaning even you are a consciousness, even you are a body, you are a consciousness with a physical body. Uh, so mantras can be used by angels, by spirits also in their own uh, or dimension of how they produce sound and frequencies. So mantra is that when you use sound, uh, so saying something repeatedly also, uh, if it is positive or negative in your life, that's a mantra you use every day that... Um, I don't, you know, uh, I don't think I understand this. That's not a really good statement to make. That's a self-sabotaging statement. That's like a mantra. Instead of saying that I don't think I understand this, you have to say that uh, uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, I will put some efforts in understanding this. I'll put more effort in understanding this. So that's how you change that. So, mantras are not only what you chant, it's the repeated things you tell yourself and you tell others about yourself. Uh, if they are positive, then it's good. If it's negative, then it's taking you backward. So, uh, mantra, then yantra. Yantra is all of that, sacred geometry. Okay, how consciousness uses sacred geometry to experience things and to do work their kind of whatever their manifestation and creation is. Okay. So very simply, even all of these three, mantra is what consciousness uh, uses to experience creation of God and to express creation of God through itself. So yantra is also uh, how consciousness uses uh, the design system of, uh, you know, how to make a chair and how to... Uh, so many plants and all you'll have seen spirals and all that's how that's how nature makes architecture so nature is also uh, using yantra god's spirit is flowing through plants to make their leaves to make their petals to make the rose and to make the fruit shape and all of that so that's all forms of consciousness how consciousness will use um, sacred geometry to experience creation and to do things or create and then finally, uh, Tantra. I'm saying this because Tantra has got a very, sometimes a negative meaning. It's, you know, a lot, a lot of it is connected to sex. But the basic definition of Tantra is this, that how consciousness uses a vehicle, physicality, to experience things and to do things in the world. So, of course, when you want to experience joy through sex, that's what you will you will use this uh, uh, this vehicle, and it's used for good. It's used for bad also to oppress people and all of that. So, so in this uh, bas uh, you know balance of masculine and feminine energy, you're using your 
body tantra first is tantra with the self that means you know mastery of how you your body uh, your consciousness how it will use your body to experience and do things so uh, that's uh, mastery of your physical body so yes yoga and many other things are uh, a degree of tantra with the self and then after that you do tantra with a partner that is of course at the right time when your hormones are right and the right stage of life you will have um, you know sexual relationships and uh, so that's one part of life and then later also after that part is done still you use your vehicle to experience and do things in life so that's tantra of the self so yes uh, connecting to what i was saying so more of the feminine feminine energy is used when we use our vehicle uh, to have more experiences and do more activities connected with earth and with other things so that is the feminine energy now finally just to say something that you know which is the whole picture should not get missed um just uh, uh, yesterday i was discussing somebody forwarded me a video and said that uh, you know is this a certain thing true where i mean in the catholic system and all of that where they said you know uh, god the father god the son and god the holy spirit so they said that you know the mother's missing uh so so is this a manipulation of our systems because you know um, uh, how did the son come without the mother being there they said yes this is a manipulation of our sis- uh, entire system that uh, and then i went further out to say that you know that the the daughter is also missing uh, it's only god the father god the son god the holy spirit there should be god the father god the mother god the son god the daughter and i mean spirit is flowing through all of them and they are also divine and holy if they are in natural law so so yeah when you understand the fundamental basics you will be able to tear apart a lot of these uh, fake false things that have been going on for thousands of years on this planet so uh, so when i am talking of this it is uh, when we say mother earth mother earth, that's the physicality that's the thing that we engage with but also understand that father sky uh, is the energy around the earth what we call the biosphere the akashic records the morphogenic field that's the pace of the masculine left brain that's where thoughts ideas plans uh, projections okay cause effect all of those things are thought in the mind space um, that can be the seed of certain things but of course after having the thought implanted you actually have to do if it's certain things in the physical world physical bodies have to go and do that work so this entire planet uh, it is masculine feminine within your own self then masculine feminine in your relationships in your family in society then that divine masculine feminine is also there on the planet okay so mother earth is the feminine side of it and uh, to you know not quote keep on quoting half science you understand that father sky also is the energy around the planet and similarly uh, with our solar system also uh, it is uh, the sun is called the you know uh, masculine energy and the planets themselves are called the feminine energy and like this energy is keep on expanding in the cosmos and there is masculine and feminine everywhere but um, uh, i i think in the one day life transformation program i may have not put the slide of the different dimensions so as you go higher and higher in di- adinareshwar uh, so at certain higher dimensions there is no masculine and feminine and there there are just beings and energy and above that there is what we call in the indian system uh, as brahma vishnu and mahesh that is uh, the creative energy the maintenance energy and the destructive energy and above that there is just one energy from from which these three come out and all these three are there everywhere across the cosmos uh, even in the words that i'm speaking 
if I say something new to you, uh, that is, and you you understand it and you accept it or you're willing to experiment with it, that is the creative energy of something that I have passed on to you. And then if you do the, I teach people acupressure and all of that. And so if the person, uh, uh, they have created in themselves the capacity to do acupressure. Now for how many years uh, will they do it for the, this entire lifetime? So the Vishnu energy will continue of that particular acupressure technique with that person for one lifetime. If they will teach it to their children and tell their children to teach it to their children, then it will work for uh, quite a few generations. And uh, then nobody is going to come and destroy that, you know, the Shiva energy, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Yeah. Uh, when the people stop uh, giving their time to practice that, then that will diminish. And in that time, they'll do something else. So that energy of the acupressure will go down by itself. Maybe they will do acupuncture or they will do something else. So this Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh energy is everywhere. It is the energy that we use to in the creative process to do things. That's the Brahma energy. Whether we say it with our voice or we do it with our hands. Next is, for how long our design is so good for purpose with uh, having the right blend of masculine and feminine energy. For that long, the structure, the activity or the teaching will remain. So that's the energy of vision. And then, like now, I'll be having the ascending cycle. Many old practices that are destructive are being dropped. And in their place, we are taking new things and doing new things, right? From concrete homes, they are going to natural homes. So that means that energy that we had invested, whoever is going from concrete to natural homes, right? That much amount of energy that we had invested in concrete homes, now we're letting it decline. So it goes into the Mahesh. And then we take that same energy, we recycle and we use, start building green homes. So that's again Brahma, Vishnu, for however long we use the right science and tech. Like I give an example, this home in Goa that I'm sitting for, the walls behind, they are 200 years old. And I don't see any reason why they will not last another 200 years. As long as this roof and the rain doesn't come, you know, down. And that's the most important part, you know, in these... Uh, 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 mud homes, uh, that the roofing should be kept well and the water should not seep into the wall. Because I've seen my next house also, when uh, it the wall, one of the walls came down because the tiles, they didn't break, but a lot of grass was growing in. And uh, as the grass grew in, the roots were coming under the tiles. And so they were taking the rainwater and the drops were falling at that point where the tile and the wood was touching the wall. And so with water seepage, that one wall, uh, you know, fell down after in one rainy season. And the only fault of mine was I did not clean the grass on the roof. I was very nice. And for me, it was a good experience. Wow, there's grass growing on my, you know, roof of the second house. And it looks so wonderful and beautiful. And uh, such a good experience, like you can call it, you know, feminine energy experience, enjoying the experience. But that was natural law that applied. And natural law took the water inside and did that thing. And only after all of it happened, I said, oh, shucks, yeah. This is working through natural law. I did not understand it. And so, since I understand it, now I know how not to make that mistake, okay? So, yeah. Now, yes, if anybody's got any further questions, can go ahead. We crossed time today. And it's uh, Saturday evening, 8.30. But yes, if you have some questions, go ahead. There's a comment here from, yes, Asta. Okay, a laptop dying. But yeah, yeah, yeah. She really enjoyed the session. And I think uh, she signed out, yeah. Yes, if anybody has uh, any question, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Daryl, thank you very much for the session. And this, uh, maybe we have given a lot of knowledge to integrate this. Uh, uh, it will take little time. So in the meantime, we need to start somewhere. So we need tips on that. Like See, we can start. Yeah. So so don't uh, put this statement. Don't say it to yourself. <laughs> and uh, I'll just guide. Uh, so I'm just giving you the idea, okay, of how to apply all of this. So don't <laughs> say the statement that it will take some time. Uh, uh, 
okay that statement you cancel out and you okay. say that uh, uh, yeah some example that i can use right now i'll start practicing it today and uh, my skills will start building up from tomorrow okay so it does uh, nothing needs to take time uh, it's only our statements that block it so yes mm. i gave uh, two three examples now uh, so if you understood from that good or if you want something specific to your situation you can ask me now i'll give you some tips mm nothing like that actually but it will take some time so because i'm just recovering i'm becoming better so i want to build myself in a better shape so that i can help serve society because i want to give yes. back like because in few years back you are in the same situation i am right yes now. so so one thing is good your heart and your intention is good that means you want to do something for society now the obstacle that is there in between it is certain health condition so mm. that means daily you have to work on that health condition and mm. try two three you know techniques or some newer technique also uh, intention should be i will learn something tomorrow that may help me get better so keep an open mind to this if certain technique is working for you then keep doing it till you get better and better results like um, yeah i had given you those acupressure points for your hands for your back now yes. your back injury is quite serious so it will take a longer time uh-huh. so what you can do is uh, you are doing those points on your hands you can also do those points on your feet now mm-hmm. has have you or anybody else been doing those points on your feet no i'm doing in hands regularly from past uh, okay so see now faster is uh, double fast is going to happen if you do okay. it on your feet also okay i'll so learn on my website become healthier extinct in the acupressure section go and see the chart of foot uh, reflexology mm-hmm. i have i keep on sharing it in my daryl healthcare group where you are so mm-hmm. foot points are there so see the points for the back and then you ask somebody to press those points you know how that if they are pressing at the right point then it will pain then mm. get somebody to you know twice a day to press some points on your feet mhm then uh, so this is how you have to be a little open minded then uh, homeopathic uh, arnica arnica is a remedy for fractures okay so you mm. go to some uh, uh, homeopathic doctor or go to the homeopathy store and just tell them that this is the kind of fracture i have what is the potency of arnica i should take and at what intervals okay so that is another technique so this way you can uh, improve your healing so right now the biggest amount of science and effort that you have to put mm. is on your condition of fixing your back so your mobility and all is better without mm. doing a proper job of that your next steps also are not going to be powerful mm mm-hmm. so yeah so then uh, yeah i hope you have seen my uh, online program also of joint pain arthritis osteoporosis and all how to fix okay so one part of it is uh, stopping eating certain foods that are causing bone problems like coke mm-hmm. mirinda pepsi sugar milk and milk products and all of that mm-hmm. meat and all of that too much of meat so there are certain things you have to stop in your diet and there are certain things that you have to add in your diet Mm-hmm. protein vitamin calcium nuts beans peas all of that so yeah so to try and see right now at the point in your life where is the biggest obstacle there you need to put the best science healing techniques and effort mm-hmm. okay. okay what is the arnica 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 a uh, r- what is that homeopathic it's a homeopathic remedy Okay. A R N I C A. Right. So actually, I stopped homeopathy after taking your consultation for this uh, swelling and all that, and I'm using that kidney cleansing. Uh, okay. So I thought, so I may need to consult. Once the kidney again. cleansing is fifteen uh, days after you finish that, you can start the homeopathy. Okay. Okay. So fifteen days is done after for today. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to answer one question of uh, Somesh here, which is in the text. Uh, yeah, Somesh is still here. 
So is there any technique beginners can practice to access universal guidance and all information? So, yeah, so more than practice any technique, uh, you have to be open yourself to the reality, okay, that uh, you are uh, a receiver and observer of um, everything that is happening. You are open to learning from everything that's going on. And uh, the first uh, you know, channel that you should tap is into yourself. Now, somebody wants a technique. I have, on my um, YouTube channel, there is, a, there is a meditation there to connect with your higher self. So just go to my YouTube channel and put the word, you know, uh, higher self. You'll get a meditation for that. So that's a deep meditation taking per people into their consciousness, higher chakras and higher self and monadic self. So you can do that uh, uh, meditation a few times and that will give you some energetic connection and understanding. But more important than that is uh, that uh, you have to be have an open attitude to observing things and understanding how they work in the direction of your quest. So what is the direction of your quest? There's so much of information that's available. If you have to, uh, uh, you know, that is what they say, focus. What is your goal? Which direction you want to? Uh, if you will put your energy there, you will get more information back. There's no need to put any information. If you put your attention everywhere, mm -hmm. then a lot of your energy will be dissipated. You will not learn in a focused way what you need to learn. So this technique, what I explain of accessing, uh, you know, wisdom in the here and now, uh, it happens when you can block out our, all other things and concentrate. Uh, it's not just a meditative technique. Just place your attention and have a spirit of inquiry uh, on a particular thing. So if your inquiry is, how do I get out of this job and how do I get into a better job? The, the energy should not be of how do I get out of the job so much. It should be more on what are the other better jobs to do? So once you put your energy there and, um, you know, uh, job, meaning uh, what is the step uh, before job? The step before the job you're doing to give some service to society. So now, so you have to go to that point. What is that service to society? That will be important for the future. Not for the current thing that's collapsing, which we want to take down all that uh, destructive thing. Because anyway, your energy may not be wanting to participate in something destructive. So you look at something green. Uh, uh, and, you know, so the first thing is that uh, people having some direction and some plan. I have come across people where they say, I have no, I have no aim in life. Uh, I have no direction. Uh, so where to start? So the thing is, uh, you can start wherever your consciousness, uh, you know, uh, observes something and cares about something. Uh, so there are many jobs to do, but if you don't like the work you're doing, you will not do it well. So just see what uh, uh, motivates you, what is catching your attention, what you feel is uh, uh, more, more relevant to you or makes you feel better. Some people want to help uh, senior citizens. Some people want to help children because they see, th uh, if there are people who do not see any difficulty children are having, then they don't uh, have any reason to help children. So it depends on what you observe. So generally, we are very genuine, all of us, human beings, human beings and consciousness. We would like to help things where there is a problem. And then in doing that service, if we earn some money, then that is a job. So, so for people who do not have any pre-decided uh, goal and aim in life, I said every day you get up, just see what is the thing that is getting your attention, that is upsetting you, what problem you want to fix, or if there's no problem you want to fix, what is the feeling inside you have, you want to express yourself in an artistic way or something, then that is the direction in which you will go. And I'm saying for people right now in the world, um, uh, where it's shifting from, you know, this controlled destructive times to very new things where a lot of things we are going to do manually. 
Okay, so I, my advice would be to pick up real life skills in uh, places like villages and, you know, what work is over there. Uh, because we know stock markets and all are going to crash. Also, money system is going to get, uh, you know, damaged very badly. They're going to ma manipulate us into getting into digital currencies. Mm. But then the real assets and real barter amongst people are on the ground food and other articles and all of that so that is the permanent uh, currency uh, so yeah uh, so look for all these uh, things in your life and uh, yeah uh, these things i've seen uh, people who will be open because you have to uh, realize finally that all of this you are uh, you know some people may be thinking that same same problem that we have been taught since few thousand years. That close your eyes and then you will connect to God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the thing is, God is already here. God is already everywhere. When you get up in the model, morning and some problem is coming in front of you, who's creating that problem? Who's doing certain by on purpose or by mistake? Uh, if this is all God in action. So God is there every time. There's no You cannot escape from God. No, <laughs> your eyes open, God is everywhere, you are seeing all God material, you are breathing God, you are talking, you are, you know, you're interacting with all other human beings and other animals and species who are all God aspects. So, first realization is that God is everywhere, uh, there's, there's no way to go to find God. And then you just uh, interact with those aspects of God which have more meaning for you and uh, which you can work with more, which, uh, you know, you have some current capability. And if your current capabilities are like stock market analysts, a marketing consultant and all of that, which are going to go down, then you look at any other space where, uh, what you like, uh, whether it's water systems, air systems, energy systems, or food systems, or uh, natural uh, whatever cosmetics women may like to get into that um so there are uh, thousands of uh, uh god expressions that are waiting for your engagement so this is the faster path to to access god uh, and of course when uh, there's too much of god stimulation is too much right and people are too scared and too uh, uh, worried about uh, everything and yeah we go through a lot of trauma then that's the time people need to shut up you know they need to cut off so they go into meditation or they leave the city go to the village so that is all genuine if too many destructive aspects of god that are there in the entire cosmos which are being run by these consciousnesses also which are god but they are under uh, the influence of breaking natural law uh, and creating destructive things. So whatever they do is going to be hitting you from so many sides, which is happening right now. The different lousy laws that are being passed in this country, which are damaging to people's health and damaging to the environment. Um, that is also there in our face. So some people may want to become lawyers and they have in our groups and they're taking it on that way. Some people are trying to bring out the bigger science and tech. Some people don't want to engage with this government system and all that. They want to do something uh, more with their liking. So a million possibilities are there. You just have to be more authentic with yourself and what you're experiencing. And you have to choose. Uh, you are the God aspect that's choosing that you will respond and you will engage in this way. So that's the biggest thing uh, Somesh to get involved with. It's only when you miss this thing, right? they say you miss the boat, then you may imagine that God is to be accessed somewhere else and through some other methods. Yeah. Thank so, you. Darling. That answers very clearly. Thank you so much. Yes, you're, you're welcome. Welcome. Yes, uh, thanks from Nilima. Thank you too. Uh, yes, uh, people have it's over time and people have the other engagements. So please carry on and yeah, we'll wind up. Uh, yeah, it's somebody was saying something. Yeah, can I call you at nine or two? Is it okay to call? Uh, yes, so after this session, actually, I have uh, one of the potential speakers of the New Earth Summit 
Uh, I said I would call them at eight o'clock. It's almost eight forty, so I'll mm. just get back to them and then I will call you. Okay. Okay, not a problem. I'll wait for your call. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay everyone. Thank thanks for joining in the session. Namaste. Yeah. Have yeah. a good Saturday evening. And tomorrow evening we're having the Earthkeepers uh, uh, meeting online. That's to discuss the summit and speakers and all. So all of you who are interested in that, please join tomorrow. Okay, that will be. We want to keep uh, people Sunday evening uh, way free, so that will be from four to six. I'll share the uh, invite in the group tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye, Meenal. Thank you once again. Amarnath. Yes, Samesh. Bye.